I believe that the Nintendo Switch has a couple sleeper game of the year games coming out this year in 2021. And I want to talk to you guys about one of them today, along with some other things before we get into any of that. What's up, everyone? OJ here. Welcome back to another Nintendo Switch gaming video. I am doing fantastic today. Hopefully you guys are having a good start of your day or middle of your day or whatever the case is. But I want to make sure that you guys hit that like button and also subscribe if you are someone new for daily gaming videos and more. And a little bit of an update. I know I said that Monster Hunter Stories 2 giveaway. We are going to change that over to a No More Heroes 3 giveaway since this is the month that No More Heroes 3 is launching. So yes, we will have details. Make sure you follow me on Twitter for that. So a little bit of an update for you guys, but enough about that, guys. Let's get into it here. We've got some brand new details for the sleeper game of the year, at least in my opinion. We know the mainstream media, they're not gonna do that. There's not enough shoot 'em up bang bang in this game, but this is Shin Megami Tensei 5. We've got some brand new information going down from Atlas, screenshots, art, this is, in my opinion, in my most humblest of opinions, this is the best looking RPG on the Nintendo Switch, hands down, one of the best looking games and one of the best looking third party games, of course, on the system, it just is. Like these new screenshots show it off in all of its glory and it's so good to have an original built for the Nintendo Switch, modern, RPG on the platform, not a port of something else, not a game that came way later, not something else that was already on a different platform, but a game that was announced and they took years of development with them fine tuning it for the platform that it's on with the Nintendo Switch, not stating that other developers haven't done it, but just in this degree, I think this is one of the first or very few examples of this and Atlas has given us some new information. So you guys are gonna be seeing some brand new screenshots from the game, the sleeper, Game of the Year for 2021, Shin Megami Tensei 5, and I'm going to go over some of the backstory for those who don't know what this game is about and want to get into it, plus I'll go over just a few different things with this title as I am a Shin Megami Tensei expert. So, Godhood awaits, go and claim it, after the tunnel collapsing incident, the protagonist wanders into a dilapidated Tokyo swarming with demons, a wasteland called the At. He fuses with the mysterious Ayogami and becomes the condemned being Nahobino and finds new powers to fight demons. However, it wasn't only the protagonist who wandered into that after the collapsing incident, the classmates did as well. You guys can check them out in terms of the different videos. Those have already been up, the character trailers. There's also information link in the description. So they all have wandered into this and have to find a way to figure out what the heck is going on with the protagonist and be able to return to Tokyo. Now, what awaits the three upon returning is a presence of another classmate, Tao. According to her, two versions of Tokyo exist, the one they live in and Daat. The mythical demons of that have spawned from darkness and have their sights set on humans and Tokyo itself. She reveals she is a member of the Japanese branch Bethel, an organization that is sworn to fight the demons. That's good. It's good to have secret organizations that are sworn to protect the innocent from evil demons. Now the team decides to join Bethel and protect the people of Tokyo with Yuzuru and Ichiro using the power of the demon summoning program and the protagonist using the power of Nahobino. Now, right when it seems like their peaceful lives as students have returned, an emergency notice comes in from Beto. Demons have appeared all throughout Tokyo. The protagonist and his friends head out to protect people in the affected areas. At the same time, a wave of demons has begun to swarm into the protagonist's school, joining high school, and their classmates are in danger. So yeah, this is really cool. I am looking forward to this game. What makes me excited about this is that one, for newcomers, you actually don't have to play the previous Shin Megami Tensei games. That is one of the most frequently asked questions during my live streams and everything is like, do you need to play Shin Megami Tensei 4 and 3 and all that to play this one and enjoy it? No, it's its own self-contained story. Most of the SMT games are like that. So you can enjoy this game, no problem at all. Now, another thing is that, hey, I like Persona. Well, I like this game. Yes, if you like Persona, you should like this 
this game. Although there are some things that are pretty different about them, actually a lot of things, but the general combat flow and kind of what you do, the demons, the powers, the demon fusion, there's a lot of similar elements between them. And it even seems that they're taking a little bit more of the persona vibe and flavor with this one, like with the classmates and all stuff like that. But I don't know if there's going to be like the social links. I don't think there's going to be any of the social link stuff. So there is some missing things, but overall, if you like the combat and gameplay of Persona 5, you should feel right at home and like this combat as well. So Shin Megami Tensei 5 coming out this November, big game for Nintendo. I think it's going to do a lot better than people expected. I think it's going to review a lot better than people expect if people aren't frauds out there when it comes to the mainstream gaming media. So we're going to have to wait and see. But based on what I've seen, this is easily one of the most impressive, if not the most impressive Japanese RPG on the Nintendo Switch in terms of third party developer wise. But what are your thoughts? on SMT5 and what's going on here. What do you think about the gameplay and the new screenshots and what's going on? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. All right, now moving on to the next topic. It looks like there is a bit of an issue with The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. Now this soft lock glitch, I actually already got past this and never had that issue at all. So this isn't going to affect everybody, but I wanted to make sure that I let you guys know just for the speedrunners out there or for people that are still going to play the game or haven't had time to get to it because this game is selling extremely well if you watch my last videos. So this is important information for you guys to know out there and obviously the legend of zelda skyward sword originally had a big issue in terms of a glitch nintendo had to release a whole wii channel for skyward sword on the wii since they couldn't do patches normally they had to release a whole channel just to get it fixed which was a little bit of a thorn in people's sides out there but let's get into what's going on here with this skyward sword hd soft lock glitch now based on several different reports out there the legend of zelda skyward sword hd appears to suffer from a soft lock glitch now the issue takes place in the lanaru mining facility at one point a crate needs to be moved in various directions so it can be used as a platform to reach another area of the dungeon however the particular glitch causes the crate to get stuck and affected players unable to progress further in which is very unfortunate. Now, it's not sure why this is happening here, but The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword does have a auto-save feature. So that's why it's a soft lock glitch. The auto-save, you should be able to just back out of there and then just head right back into your auto-save, and this should be okay, which is good that they added that auto-save feature just for stuff like this. This is exactly why you should have an auto-save feature in the game. So in case some type of weird glitch happens that nobody caught the first time, you will have that auto-save and your whole save is not done or dead because of it. So very good that they added that auto-save feature as well. Now, I recently played through this area Area and I didn't encounter this but I can see based off of the video that I'm seeing that yeah I can see how some people can run into this on their first playthrough so make sure you guys are careful with that there so what are your thoughts on the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD how are you enjoying the game did you run into this issue let me know your thoughts in the comment section below all right and moving on to the final topic here Nintendo has addressed one of the biggest concerns with the Nintendo Switch OLED, outside of the pricing of the system or why they didn't add more stuff to it or whatever the case is, the next biggest thing is what's going on with the OLED screen and will there be burn in? I get this question quite a bit on my channel and I'm glad that Nintendo came out and stated something because I've been saying the same thing as someone who loves OLED screens. I have an OLED TV, an LG CX and I absolutely love it and I've had no burn in and it's going on almost a year now. So let's go ahead and get into what Nintendo had to say here with concerns with the OLED screen on the Nintendo Switch OLED model. Quote, we've designed the OLED screen to aim for longevity as much as possible. But OLED displays can experience image retention if subjected to static visuals over a long period of time. However, users can take preventative measures to preserve the screen by utilizing features included in the Nintendo Switch systems by default, such as auto brightness function to prevent the screen from getting too bright, and the auto sleep function to go into auto sleep mode after short periods of time. So there you go, guys. 
That's essentially what it comes down to when it comes to OLED TV screens and OLED screens just in general. Really what it comes down to is this. You just can't leave the image on on a static image with like text or whatever the case is for really long periods of time. We're not talking about like 30 seconds or a minute or three minutes or four minutes. We're talking about like hours at a time just leaving a static image in there. Most TVs and most devices with OLED screens have the ability to auto dim, have the ability to turn off the TV after some time. It's all built into it to make sure that these things don't happen with burn in. Plus, we're multiple years after the technology of OLED's been around. Heck, even some of the old school PS Vitas, I would say most of them don't have the OLED burn in and that was back in 2011. So we should be good at this point. And I love OLED screens, man. I'm a huge fan. I'm a believer in the OLED technology. I think it's great for what the games are doing. It does make the games look more crisp and vibrant. And I'm going based off of my LG CX and based off of my OLED PS Vita that I have. So based off of those two, even back when I first got my OLED PS Vita, I was blown away and that wasn't even in HD. That was like 540p or something like that. And I was blown away. Heck, even still to this day, the games and the colors look crisp and vibrant on there on my LG CX TV that has such great contrast and colors and vibrancy. It makes my Switch games, Xbox, PlayStation look so much better. So I'm excited for this Nintendo Switch OLED and I can't wait to play Metroid Dread Portable on that baby when it comes out on October 8th. So what do you guys think about these topics here? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Check out the links in the description. We've got Twitter. Go to give us a follow on there. Stay up to date on all the latest gaming news and information. Also, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you can. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you for the next one. Peace.